Luke 14, verse 16. Everyone look at it, and I'm sure it'll be up on the Blessetron in a moment. That's what I call him. He said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are ready. Verse 18, but they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a piece of ground. I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I've married a wife, therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to the master of the house. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the lanes and streets of the city, bring in here the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you've commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of these men who were invited shall taste my supper. I want all of you to look me in the eye for a moment. I believe that Destiny Church is about to find her destiny. Pretty ironic statement. And it's not what you think. Last night as I was praying for you, I read this wonderful note that they wrote me but it basically said, obey God. Don't worry if you're popular with us, just obey God. And the Lord led me to this chapter. And the first thing I learned is that Jesus said it was a great supper. So I want you to imagine with me the kind of dinner the marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be. Excellence beyond our imagination, ex exquisiteness, it's indescribable. So my point is for Christ to say that a man gave a great supper, it must have been something. And when no one showed up, and I want you to remember the word invited, because that word is very key to this whole sermon. He invited many and they all said no. There must have been a vast number of people. That's all I'm gonna say in speculation. But the next thing that you'll find is that it says he became angry. How many of you believe that every once in a while, anger is an important quality in a leader? How many of you are kind of angry at what's happening to the United States of America right now? How many of you are? I don't believe the church is to take a back seat as this political disaster takes place. Our children are being taught to hate our country. They are completely rewriting American history to make America look evil. Now what made the master angry is the subject of this sermon. And I need every eye to look at me and those of you at home, wherever you are, to grasp this point. The basis of his anger is summed up in this. What it was that they thought was better than the meal he offered them. The experience at his mansion, the decor, the seating, the food, it's what they thought was better that made him angry. And that's why I'm angry. I can't believe what America thinks is better than the gospel of Christ. I can't believe it. I can't believe what professors are telling our youth is better than actual American history. Critical race theory is a racist concept. It's pure and simple, look at me. It's gonna make you mad, but it is. Because the minute that you ascribe to any color race an inherent evil, you are racist whether it's white, black, purple, chartreuse, Eskimo, or car dealer. It's racism. 
And it's not what Dr. King said when he said, I dream of a day when my children will not be judged for the color of their skin, but for the content of their character. And when Coca-Cola says, I want my employees to act less white, that is a racist term. Now, if I lost you forever, so be it. But the devil laughs in hell because he's saying, you know what? If I can get the right and the left to hate each other long enough, I can get racism to survive for another generation by letting it change form. Now, in the early stages of the sexual revolution, we were told that gender was not a matter of choice. We were told to accept people's alternate views of their sexuality because they said, God made me this way. Now the left has totally reversed its position, making gender a matter of personal choice. So I wanna know when you were lying, back then or you're lying now? But I'm gonna tell you something. It stands that the Christian church needs to have the experience of this master of the banquet, which is to say, if you really wanna get rid of racism, then you want Christianity. If you want to get rid of economic inequality, then you want Christianity. Help me, somebody. If you really want a society with greatness, you want the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me preach right now. It's wonderful. said something even more important. My house must be full. The master of the house came to a realization, one that I hope this church will come to today. And it's found in a picture of a man holding a cardboard box, a cardboard poster over his head. I don't know if we got that. Did we got it? And I hope you can see it. I, I didn't have time to check the resolution. Okay, it says, this is the USA. There is no one coming to re our rescue if things go sideways. No one will be resupplying us. No one will airdrop food, ammunition, medicine. There is no place to escape to for freedom. This is it. That's why I'm angry.